Okay, this is just a short video, hopefully short, that will help you use ANOVA, use R to solve an ANOVA problem. I'll show you first here that I have actually an Excel file saved as a CSV, which has score and method. So it just has exam scores and I think it's three methods there. So now I have an R file. Okay, you can see here that you're going to need to have some packages installed, SJPlot and SM, if you're going to do it using the exact same methods that I use. There's more than one way to do anything in R. I'm going to look over here at Packages, and I will tell you, I already have these installed. They're listed on the list here. If we went down and I could stop fast enough, there's SJPlot and, and SM. They're already in here, but if you don't have them in there, I'm assuming on your you're on your own computer now, you could just go to Install Packages, and if I went S, J, you can see I can just go here to SJ Plot and then hit install. I'm going to install the dependencies as well. Mine are already in there, so I won't need to do this. You saw I had a data set called My Data One. It had scores and methods in it. So I want to go read that, but before I do, I need to set my working directory so it knows where that file is. Mine happens to be on the desktop, so that's what I'll session, set working directory, and choose directory. Now mine's already on desktop. If you're in one of these others, I would run stat stuff, for example, I'd click on that, select the folder, and it will go into that folder to look for my data. So I'm just going to highlight that. You may have to highlight it like that, depending on how you have yours set up. This is my script window down here, and actual console is up here. You can see when I clicked run, it put the command up there. And over here on the upper right-hand side, it says it did read it. We have a data set with 150 observations of two variables. Then I'm going to attach that, and now I'm going to say method as factor method. The reason I'm doing that is my data were in ones, twos, and threes, and so R will try to read that as a quantitative variable but I'm using it for categories, category 1, 2, and 3, uh, and not as a numerical thing, so I'm just telling it to read it as a factor, as a categorical variable. And then I'm going to do a box plot of score by method just to get a first run at these kind of things. One thing I'll tell you here is that you can sort of see that the middle one looks like the highest and has the smallest standard deviation, and the one on the right has the lowest scores, pretty large standard deviation, probably the largest, but it also has this outlier here that's kind of interesting. So now I'm going to create an object called A, which AOV stands for Analysis of Variance. Score is a function of method. If you have some other variables you're using, wherever I have score and method, you'll have to change the names. The easiest way to do that is go up and click search and then just if you want to choose change score put score over here and whatever you want to call yours over here and then click all and it'll make all the changes for you you'll have to do that for both score and method if you have different names now I'm just creating that model and now I'm going to do a summary of it and you can see that it has I'm on a pretty small screen computer right now so I'll have to drag things back and up uh, but there's your source table with uh, the F value and the sums of squares and that kind of thing. Down here, and then I can do Tukey's HSD. Well, I'm going to have to pull back down again here. R does it a little bit differently than some programs. It gives you the difference between each, of me between each pair of means, and then a lower and upper value. So you can see this first one goes from minus 1.8 to 9.6. That means there might not be a difference. The interval includes zero. And you can see that the p-value is not less than 0.05. So there's not a difference between between groups 2 and 1. There are differences between 3 and 1 and 3 and 2. You can see with the small p-values and also that confidence limits do not include 0. So there's some of the basics of just running an ANOVA and a 2V uh, and a 2K. I'm going to get the uh, means and standard deviations. This to apply, apply a function over these things. I'm, the length is just the sample size so we're going score by method, give me the sample size. There's the sample size in each group, now the means in each group, now the standard deviations in each group. And you can then just type those on 
uh, into a table or something on a Word document or in or a PowerPoint. Let me show you a little bit, I don't know, I think easier, cooler way to do that anyway. Now I'm going to load that SM package and then I've just has uh, some code here that you can use. You'll need to change the X label and the title and the variable names if you haven't already, but I'll show you what this will do. What I've done here is now a density plot, which is, which is just a, uh, I guess, actually better than a histogram, showing you the distribution of the scores by each method. And you can see that I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to add a legend to this. So I'm going to do this, and then the next one, and I put this so you can just go locate where you want the legend, and let's say I want it here. There it is. So here's group 1, group 3, and group 2, and you can kind of see how they are distributed, and that the mean of group 2 is looks like the highest, and then group 3 and group 4 over here. And you just can compare the distributions at, as you would with um, three histograms. It's just easier to see as a density plot for all three methods. Looks like group three would also be more spread out than the other ones. So it has more data out here in the tails. And so that's two of the plots you can use would be a box plot by three groups. We already did that. And then a density plot for all three. And you can kind of compare all the data and not just the five number summary as you do with the box plot. Another thing that I have here, and this is the SJ plot, and this one's a little different. What this will do is save you some typing if you want to use this. And the only things you really have to put in this are the variable names. Of course, if you did the search and replace, as I mentioned earlier, you would have already taken care of that. If you want to change the number of digits, all these things that I have no, you really don't need to use. I just left them in there in case I want to use them for something else. That's it. Don't, you know, the thing you'll need to do is change the score and the method, or and maybe the number of digits if, if that's appropriate for what you're doing. Pull it back over here. I'm going to highlight all of that and run it. And you see it opened up the viewer window and has a nice little table here with all the means, the sample sizes, the standard deviations, the standard error. These p-values, if you're in an advanced class, those have to do with dummy coding. If you're in the basic class, just kind of don't worry about those for now. And then there's the overall mean that would be the x-bar bar, 69.67, and, and so on. Uh, at the bottom, uh, ANOVA, they call them R-squared here, but they're really eta-squareds, but same, same thing as R-squared. What proportion of the variation in all scores is explained by knowing which group someone is in. And there's just the F-test, the 13.8, that's the same thing you would have got when you run the ANOVA, and then there's the p-value for the whole test. Well, so you can just copy this table into a Word document or a PowerPoint, but it's a little bit different how you do it. You have to start at the lower right, highlight it, and right click and copy. You can't just right click into there and copy the whole table or anything. So, then just right click and paste. And there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and take this first column out and just delete that row then you'll be able to take that and put it over into a PowerPoint as well. I do recommend that you put it in Word first before you go to the PowerPoint. So once you have it in Word, you can get the whole table and copy it and then go to PowerPoint and just paste it in there. I think if we Go to the design there. We can maybe pick out something that we like there. I don't care too much for any of those, but there we go. And of course, you ought to get that font a little bit bigger. It's going to read. 
I'm going to go ahead and just make that a capital N, M, SD for the standard deviation, and SC for the standard error. And then the other thing you can do when we were over on that design is you can take this first row, define that as a header row. Um, I'm going to take this row, I think, highlighted that. Then I'm going to highlight all of this and make them banded rows so easier to see where things are at. I think I actually would prefer this bottom row to be a little smaller and not bold faced. Well, there you go.